Oof. Hey guys and gals. <clears throat> As always, thanks for tuning in. I tell you what, I'm so sorry. It's been a long time since my last video. I've had so much going on. Um, it's been over a month since I'm ev I've even touched the bike. And the footage that you're about to see on this video is actually probably closer to two months old because it was footage that I filmed while I was doing things and then didn't touch the bike. So I'm way, way, way behind. I do apologize. Um, like I said before, come March, my uh, priorities get really, really split because race season starts. I coach the MSF uh, beginner rider course to get people licensed. I coach at the track. Um, and I started racing minis <laughs> this year. So I bought a, a TTR 125 and built that. Uh, also during this time. So it's just been a ton going on. So I do apologize. But uh, the footage in this episode is, uh, again, footage that shot over a month ago. But this is the other thing that's been uh, really working me and taking a lot of time. And that's coming up with how I'm going to do the brakes. Uh, I won't go into it too much in this intro because you'll see a lot of it in the video. So enjoy. And hopefully the next footage will be available much sooner this time. <laughs> Thanks. First time she's been out of the garage since I started the build. So basically she's been indoors since, what, November? Uh, still got a long way to go. I'm probably only about 65%, maybe 70% through the build. Uh, but I thought I'd bring her outside to uh, get an idea of what everything looks like. You can only see so much in the garage with limited space to move around. Uh, see, she's down there on the kickstand. My, uh, I have the lowered height set too low. So when I raise it up to ride height, it's really not high enough. So I think that when I put my links and whatnot on, I may have accidentally flipped the thing in the back and lowered it too much. But I also have my adjustable links back there. But uh, that's what she's looking like right now. Oh man, liking it. So as you, everybody might remember from my video on doing my center stand, I bought two donor uh, manual center stands, uh, both designed for Harley, but you know, I figured I'll grab them, I'd modify them and make the one for the Roadstar. And this is the one I made after I fabricated new brackets and cut the legs and relocated the handle and whatnot. So the other day when I was out here, uh, with it out of the garage for the first time, I decided I would do a, uh, a test on this and I had it sitting on this, the center stand for several hours with me getting on and off under full weight at a slight angle just to test the, uh, the, the center stand to make sure it would hold. And I suffered a catastrophic failure. Ta-da! Now think about this for a second. This thing was designed to hold a motorcycle with those two little welds. Those are nothing more than tack welds, to be perfectly honest. They're so small. But yeah, um, I went to rock it back and forth, and I heard it crack and then snap. Um, no damage to the bike, thankfully, because, you know, I was prepared for it. This is what I was trying to do. And so this is done. So out with this thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this uh, steel, this iron, I'm going to take it down to, oh, I don't know, about a quarter inch or so here. I'm going to cut it to the length I need, obviously. And then I'm going to mate this up, weld it all the way across. And then I'll just drill the new mounting holes for the mounting bracket. Ta-da! And that will be a lot stronger. It'll still mount the same way under the bike. Um and hopefully will not suffer catastrophic failure from the breaking of a couple of really poor welds. All right, on Okay, to so it. here's uh, the beginnings of version two. As you saw in the last clip, uh, the, the donor stand that I used, uh, the mounting plate only had a, a small weld here and a small weld there holding it on and how the expectation is that that would hold a bike, I don't know. The only thing I could think is that the thought process is that 
this face here would be against the bottom of the frame rails. And so this piece would not carry the weight this would, but I mean, I don't know. I really don't know how that design uh, came to be. And on mine, since I have this sitting at the end of the frame, so it tucks up and not so much of it is below the bike, because this part tucks up uh, mostly behind the frame and in front of the swing arm. So only about three quarters of an inch of this actually is below the bike. Uh, but as you can see, I took that, uh, that angle iron, I cut it down to only about a quarter inch or so rise from here to here and made it nice and flat across and had a weld bead put all the way across the top and all the way across the bottom. So that is fully reinforced. So now I'll go ahead and put my holes back in here for the mounting bracket and uh, get it all nice and pretty and black do another test uh, i'll probably have to remeasure now just to make sure uh, so i can put my feet on there uh, because that's going to be the last thing i do uh, once i know that it's strong enough i'm not going to go ahead and spend the time getting the the edges angled correctly and get the feet uh, ground and welded on uh, without knowing for sure that the whole thing is going to hold so that's uh Center stand 2.0. All right, now uh, I'll get to drilling those holes and test it later on. All right, 2.0 ready to go. Uh, well, for the most part, it still has to be made pretty in black again. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this on, test fit it, make sure everything works. Got my holes tapped. It's always one hole that gives you a hard time. I was done with one hole and it just took forever to get through. About uh, 15 minutes, but then it took me an additional 15 on the other side because I guess I doled my bits out and they did not want to, they did not want to work. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to mock that up and see how it feels. Here's a view I bet most of you don't get. This is <laughs> with the bike on the lift underneath with the bags on. <laughs> so what I'm looking at under here is how much clearance I need between the, the, overlay fender and my stock fender where I'm going to put the bracket that's going to come here behind the license plate to then come to the D chopper bracket here to hold this out and away and even and even if I got a little bit of waggle here I'm trying to see what I can do to keep from having that translate down into the uh into the fender as much as possible so uh that should be interesting. Inter but it's cool to actually look at it from underneath like this with the bags and everything on and just see what it looks like. Still trying to set my clearance from my lowest point to make sure that when it's at its lowest, it doesn't drag. Ooh -wee. Okay, so as I stated way early on, and I haven't looked at my brakes for quite some time other than to try to fabricate the uh, caliper mount, uh, I told you I'm going to use uh, just the rear pedal for the brakes. Now, my thought originally was to just to use my regular old uh, brake pedal, put a, uh, a larger bore master cylinder, and use a proportioning valve to use just the single brake pedal for both front and rear brakes, giving an appropriate 70, 30, 65, 45 split of braking power. But then I thought about it and decided I wanted to try to have uh, independent control still of front and rear brakes. So what I've got here, I actually had a uh, my Roadstar brake uh, assem assembly, and this is from a Royal Star. And this one, uh, the master cylinder is behind in the Roadstar. The master cylinder is in front. So I'm going to have two master cylinders. So what I was trying to do is somehow combine these, uh, or at least use the two different pedals, one... Uh, pressing forward, the other one having a rotation that pressed back uh, to try to use one bracket, uh, preferably the Royal Star, because of the way the um, the actuator went through. Ooh, just cut that off so it's very hot. <laughs> Obviously, it's splined on here. That was a splined in, and this part here was connected to this, which I just cut off. So that's uh, still quite hot. Uh, so now what I think I'm going to do is somehow 
I'm going to have sorry about that I'm gonna have both of them mounted on this same um, actuator if you will for the pedal so this is what would be um, mounted onto here and this is mounted onto the um, floorboard bracket and then have this one out here and I would have them I'm not sure if I'm gonna have them offset or if I'm just gonna cut this one shorter and then have a, a peg that comes out and drops down that way I can use this one independently for the rear and then when I press on the middle I actually press both brakes so I'm still working on my final design but that's kind of where I'm leaning right now is to have the two pedals here this will obviously have to sit on its own separate bearing I'll have to have a spacer in here. This will be welded back up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if I cut this one off, then I can actually have them far closer, you know, like so. But, you know, this offset wouldn't be here because this would be shorter and it would actually sit up more like that. Um, and like I said, I could have one long uh, foot pad that comes out here, but this one down here would be cut with like a little tip down here so again I could work it independently or press the whole thing and get both brakes so that part of the design I'm still working on but that's what I'm leaning toward right now as I work through it in my head uh, I have a feeling there's gonna be quite a bit of trial and error in this though we'll see how it comes out cutting up stuff grinding stuff and soon to be welding stuff okay so I know I said on uh, Saturday I spent the better part of the day trying to come up with uh, a mechanism for the brakes. Uh, early on, I said I was gonna use the rear brakes to actuate, or the rear brake pedal to actuate the brakes. I was gonna use a proportioning valve, and I showed you guys how I had gotten um, a Royal Star brake, uh, brake set up along with my Roadstar brake set up, separated them, and I was gonna do pedals like that, where this outside one would have a longer peg or some type of setup. So that I could do that by itself just for the rear or press the front or the other one and it would end up pressing both for both brakes. As I looked at it more, I realized I was going to have to put bushings in here, put this on and have to weld it, but still have the bushings in place and what was the bushing going to be made out of. So while I will keep this in my back pocket as a potential uh, setup, uh, it's got some pretty significant pitfalls. And it's also going to require quite a bit of additional work to be done. So as I was uh, still looking about there, I, I went over by the bike and I had my heel toe shifter laying on the floor. And I said, you know what? I wonder if I could make that work. So I spent all day yesterday drilling, mounting, getting um, spring washers in there. And this is actually the mounting bracket that goes next to the... Uh, next to the rear set or the uh, floorboard and this is a set of heel toe shifters that I've reversed the peg on one drilled out the center and put on here so I, I'm not positive that it's gonna work but it looks like it may work so this would be the rear brake this would be the front brake so I ordered an another set of the foot things that are actually uh, highway pegs so they're longer so I'm gonna put a longer one on the bottom so it sticks out about an inch and a half further than the top. So when I want to actuate just the rear brake, then I'll hit the outside of this one and it should return to about here. And when I want to use both brakes, I'll actually press this one until it goes down, contacts that one, and they both go down. So then I have both front and rear brakes operated individually. Um, I've got to figure out how I'm going to mount the, the actuators for the actual master cylinders. Uh, because obviously these don't have the tabs and there's nothing, no place for springs or anything like that. And I'm going to be limited on space. Uh, so I'm still working on that, seeing how I can work the logistics out. I also have to be able to put my um, front and rear brake light switches on here. Um, because I'm probably not going to use the master cylinder that was on here. I'll probably cut this bracket off, maybe shorten this to here. Or take this bracket off and put other tabs to be able to mount uh, a master cylinder farther back because part of the problem is having the lowers there trying to run a master cylinder off the front it sticks out way too far and it hits my uh, my lower fairings 
Uh, but this is what I spent all day yesterday working on. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out, but again, now it's the logistics of making sure it's actually going to work. But I will keep this set up in my back pocket just in case, uh, because working with these, I have both um, a tab for a return spring, I have a connection point for the uh, plunger from a master cylinder, and then all I'd have to do is fab up one to go to this one. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Still working at it. Still working at it. Man, if there's two things that have held me up in this build, length of time wise, it's been the uh, the fiberglass for that fender and figure out how I'm going to do these brakes. <laughs> I've gone through multiple iterations. At first, I was going to use the stock... Uh, the stock lever with another lever next to it, one for the front, one for the rear. And then I looked at a set of heel toe shifters, drilled those out and used them. And then I found a, a brake lever that had a, uh, that had something that would actually fit right on the rod on that stock mount that had the, the uh, collars inside. Uh, I had different lengths of the pegs. Oh man, I've gone through all kinds of combinations of this stuff. And I think I got it figured out. So with the stock, the stock brake, uh, brake pedal, I cut this loose because this was on the end of this rod all the way out here. So I cut it loose. Well, that was unfortunate timing for my compressor to kick on. <laughs> so I had the, uh, this is the stock bar or brake uh, pedal, but this was all the way out here at the edge. So I cut that weld. This was free like this. I, um the the sleeve that this sat on i cut off all the way to here right now this is actually just crazy glued on there in place to hold it until i weld it because i wanted to make sure this is what i was going to do then i took one of the heel toe shifters and put it on there so what it's going to be is i'll probably i don't know I'll, maybe I, i'll do this black so it's hidden a little bit but this is going to be the rear brake and this will be the front brake and it'll sit right about here so when i depress the front brake it'll go down slightly on its own and then it'll depress the rear and actuate them both at the same time now doing it this way i'll be able to use the uh the stock setup for uh controlling the master cylinder and for the front i'm not really sure yet how i'm going to work it but i'm getting a um I'm getting several different cables, different brake cables from different bikes. Um, and I'm going to try to uh, set up something where I have a remote master cylinder that's going to be cable actuated. And uh, instead of coming directly off of the, um, the lever, it'll be a cable that'll be hooked in somewhere on the bike and that'll actuate it. But like I said, this will put both down and on the bike. It will look something like something like so. So like I said, this will sit about here and when you press it down, it'll depress both. And then this one by itself will just be the rear. And what I decided I would do is for the pegs, the heel toe shifters uh, they look decent and they will go with this outside one. So what I'll do is I'll put a shorter one for the top and a longer one for the bottom. That way I can actuate the, uh, the rear by itself without a problem. Let's see if I can get that to sit there on its own. Um, and even this, this is actually a highway peg, uh, but it's the same cut. And so what I would do is narrow this out so it'll actually fit inside that stock configuration and then that'll be nice and long so i can make sure i can hit the rear by itself and then i will put come on sit there baby sit there didn't want to stay there okay and then i'll put just the standard size one on there but i'll press it down and it'll actuate both at the same time i think that's how i'm going to do it but as we know, the only thing constant is change. So we shall see. We shall see. So I think, I think, 
This is what I'm going to go with. Uh, like I said, I might do something with the face of this, uh, add some black in it or something just so it blends a little bit better. Uh, just temporarily mounted. Uh, it's on the stock bracket, but since I, I'll probably be cutting this part off since I'm not using the stock um, uh, master cylinder. Um, but yeah, the way it's set up now, this will be the rear brake. It'll go down by itself. This is not on a spring or anything right now. So this would be the rear. It'll go down by itself. And when I press the front, it'll start off by itself. Then they'll contact and then it'll be both of them. And, you know, this is just a temporary setup. So not, I'm not going to use that bolt and I'll put something on there to pad that so that there's not a clunking of the metal when they engage together. Um, this, like I said, is a highway peg that I was able to use the, the stock mounting position and kind of played with it. So instead of drilling that hole through it, I just kind of opened up that clevis that was on there and bolted through it. Again, this is just temporary. That is very ugly. Uh, so I'll work with that and see what I can do. Uh, and this was actually a highway peg that goes with these um, heel toe shifters. Um, they're not identical. They're very close, but they're not identical. Um, I'll see. This particular one, this piece right here is an extension. So what I can technically do is put this one down here and then put the stock one Oh, no, I can't put this one down here because this screws in. Uh, I'll figure it out. I'll see which one I want to use. This one just seems to have a lot. It might just be by the way the light's shining through it. It's a, There's a lot more silver to this one than there is to this one. And uh, maybe that kind of works because of all this polished surface. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, like I said, I've gone through quite a few iterations of this setup. And uh, this seems to be the one that's going to be the most effective and efficient. Um, now I just have to figure out where I'm gonna mount a master cylinder underneath here on the rail. Um, actually those bolts there are the perfect width to put even a factory master cylinder there and then I can run the cable up so that it's all remote uh, and then sit the reservoir somewhere else. Um, but the one that I'm going to use down here will probably be very similar to an OEM one, and I'll bolt it somehow to the frame down there so it's out of the way. And since I'm using this stock one on the back side, it's got the lever I need here to actuate the rear master cylinder, and now what I have to do is come up with a way to do it on here. There is a threaded hole down there since this is a, um, a heel-toe shifter. There's a threaded hole down there that would actually be the pinch bolt, and I may be able to bring something up and out of that um, and then run my cable somewhere up here. But all that is to be determined later. Still working. I want to send a huge shout out to David Jenkins for my new cables. Uh, super heavy duty four gauge replacement cables for the roadie. Came with instructions, all that good stuff. And uh, these things are just great. Very well done, Dave very happy with this and i will probably be putting these on uh, either this evening or tomorrow uh, very well done great quality nice thick four gauge shrink wrap job is done really well super flexible terminals are on there nice and thick nice and stiff good deal good deal thank you david much appreciated